Good afternoon, everyone. We are calling the meeting to order for the uh, IT Informational Technology Committee meeting, special meeting. Uh, it is 2.02. Uh, first off, we'll be starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If uh, Supervisor Zanger can get us. Moving on to roll call, Supervisor Zanger? Yeah, here. Supervisor Curl? Here. We're all here. Um, if I can get a motion for acknowledgement of certificate. I'll make a motion. Can I get a second? Yeah, I'll second. Two zero passes. Uh, public comment. Anybody in the audience who would like to comment on anything not on the agenda on Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. In chambers, please provide a speaker card. We have no comments. Item five, approved minutes for the September 28th, 2022 Information Technology Committee meeting. May I get a motion? Oh, yeah. Public comment. And then I have a comment after public comment. Public comment on Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. No comment. And I'd like to make a motion that we have council and the CAO agree that the minutes are because we weren't at the meeting. Are we good with that? I we can we were both talking. We talked about this before. You you can approve it based on you not being there. Um, just That's as okay. a um, okay. Then I, I make as, a motion yeah. that they're approved. Yeah. Based on staff's staff comments yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Two zero passes. Thank you. Moving forward, um, item number five of uh, approving the proposed resolution pursuant to AB 36, allowing for teleconferencing. Public comment on Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. In chambers, please provide a speaker card. No comment. May I get a motion? So moved. May I get a second? Second. Two zero passes. Item number six, appoint committee chair and vice chair of the information technology committee. Public comment, may I get on Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon in chambers, please provide a speaker card. No comment, may I get a motion? I'll make a motion. I'd like to nominate supervisor Curro for chair. I'll second that. May I get a motion for vice chair? I'd like to make a motion to make Dom Zanger, uh, Supervisor Zanger, as vice chair. Yeah, I'll second that. Two zero passes. Okay, so um, we're going to approve the Information Technology Committee schedule for the calendar year of 2023, meeting every other month, the third Monday at 2 p.m., unless there's uh, other direction from the committee. Can I get public comment? On Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. In chambers, please provide a speaker card. No comment. Okay, so we'll bring it back to the committee. And do we have any comments about the meeting schedule, Supervisor Zanger? And staff, do you feel by monthly is good enough? I, I think it is. Um, I you know, yeah. I, if we I, have a need, if, maybe if there's call a need, a or an emergency, and there there have been times where we've done that, and then we'll okay. call a special meeting, arrange uh, time with 
with the committee members and then we publish it. Okay. Yeah. So do I have a motion to approve the schedule? Yeah, motion, so moved. And I'll second. Okay, so now we're gonna receive and accept uh, the local agency technology assistance, the, is it pronounced LATA, grant update. And Brian, are you gonna be doing the presentation? I will do the presentation. Okay, great. Yes. I think we're just waiting for the uh, switch over to the monitors, but um, yeah, so uh, obviously the purpose of our gathering today is just to get an update on um, what San Benito County has been doing with regards. Can I interrupt real quick? Sorry. Because we're all so new, would you mind just introducing yourself so we all know who you are and your role? Sure. So I am Brian Gordon, a member of the IT department here with the County of San Benito. Um, I'm also the lead on the broadband effort uh, with the county and also um, project manager overall for technology. I'm the only introduction. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, you know, we just wanted to talk today about uh, some of the things that we've been doing uh, with regards to the efforts in the direction of broadband. We know that broadband is important because uh, in our area, we do have a portion of the unserved and the underserved and um, broadband is key uh, when it comes to equity and access to the internet, uh, which again is key because it affects all of our growth and development with regards to access to information. So we are making efforts along with uh, some of our partners and other um, vested parties to you know, do what we can to uh, improve upon an infrastructure and to build out a network so that we can get greater services to the end users. So I was just gonna start off with um, a, couple, a couple little maps. Bear with me here. Okay, so um, we have, this is a map illustrating um, one of the ARDOF award winners, um, Hankins Technology. And Hankins Technology um, won an award to get funding to help build out the fabric of the open access network. Um, and this just kind of illustrates some of the areas that uh, he was awarded. It's uh, North County. It's um, out east, uh, the other side of Fairview. We know that we have a lot of uh, residents out there who, you know, they get some measure of internet, but it's not the best quality. Um, and then it goes down further into South County. So um, he, was, he was one of the Ardoff Award winners. The other one that we had was uh, Etheric Networks. Um, and you can see he's got a big coverage area now, uh, one of the challenges that Etheric is having right now is their solution is built on an aerial model. So it's built on not in-ground network with fiber, but um, wireless. And the state wants the infrastructure to be in-ground. So I know there's some discussion going back and forth. Um, they're challenging that, that effort to see if, you know, this, this um, aerial solution is one that they'll accept. So we don't know exactly where this is playing out, but um, that's kind of the state it's in right now. So the County of San Benito, um, several years ago, uh, invested, made a major investment uh, along with the city to put in our own um, fiber. So we do have fiber that runs throughout the city. Um, it's right here. It goes all the way out to um, Technology Parkway, and then it touches some other areas within the county. Uh, this is nice because it gives those coming on to, uh, those who are helping assist build the open access network, um, they can leverage portions of our fiber, again, to build out that network and get to places quicker. So um, we have what's called some dark fiber, which simply means that we have strands of fiber that are not in use. 
And uh, we're actually talking right now with uh, Hankins Technology about an MOU where perhaps we can partner along with him to use some of our dark fiber and assist us in some of the projects that we would like to get completed as well. Um, and these are all, all related to getting internet to the unserved and the underserved. One thing, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, is um, just to add to that, um, as um, Brian had mentioned, it, this happened quite a few years ago. Uh, the effort was because of um, basically the collapse of us getting um, fiber for free uh, through charter, we actually had to move on it and do something because it was going to be about three or $4,000 per link per month for all of our connections, which was going to be substantial. We would not be able to afford that ongoing cost. So we decided to do this. Thank goodness we did it when we did it because it was it was still expensive, but it's, you know, today's prices are much higher. Um, but we did it in a way um, where we thought about the future. <clears throat> and that's what I wanted to highlight here is, is we actually installed 96 strands of fiber, <clears throat> which means that um, other agencies, uh, uh, other companies, we could leverage that. And, um, and that's kind of where we're at today, where Hankins and, and uh, Entheric Network could leverage that. Um, and so if we decide to move in this direction, which I think it'd be a benefit to the community if we did that, um, we would have to work through some things like MDF access and other things, um, but we could, you know, obviously work through that. But I think it's a, it's a really huge benefit for the community because we could leverage some of that. I know there was um, um, issues in the industrial parkway area, getting a fast internet out there, and we actually have the fiber lines out there to accomplish that. It's just now getting that last mile, getting that to the doorstep, which these companies can actually do for us. So. Yes. So with that, I just wanted to share with you a side point with that, which there's not a lot of um, jurisdictions have done a, a full on directional bore of fiber. That's not, it's not, an, and it took some effort because we had to go through railroad tracks and a bunch of other things. So it took some time and an effort to do it. It's not an easy task, but you know, we've, we did it some time back. So now we're in a good standing, a good, good place from that perspective, so. I'll pass it back to you, Brian. Yeah, thank you, Ray. No, that's that's great. Yeah, so we have a significant foundation which we can build upon. I think that's the key point from all that. So some of the efforts that uh, we have made is uh, we have applied for the Local Agency Technical Assistance Grant, um, referred to commonly as LATA. And um, while we entered into this grant application in August of 2022, um, we did that in conjunction with um, Golden State Connect Authority, um, which is also a portion of RCRC. But the uh, initiatives for entering into the relationship with them is ex to expand the broadband in rural counties through the pursuit of technical assistance and funding. And uh, it is for the member counties, and we are one of those member counties. And another uh, initiative is, again, to build an open access uh, municipal broadband infrastructure. Golden State Connect Authority uh, works with a couple uh, managing partners to make sure that that happens. Um, one of the entities that they use is a company called Utopia Fiber. Um, Utopia Fiber works on the network design engineering management piece. And then there's Tilson Technology, who's part of that. And they provide the actual construction services. So the permitting, the engineering, um, all the pre-construction work down to what they refer to as a shovel-ready design. The uh, board did give approval for uh, acceptance of the grant um, to, to Ray. And uh, that was accepted in December of 2022. Uh, we received our executed copy of the award, and uh, that took place on December 5th. The grant is for $500,000. So the grant, um, again, can be used for pre-construction expenses, which, you know, you can imagine will be considerable uh, trying to build out a network of this size. Um, the funding is 100% funded with no match required from the county.
So RCRC, uh, Rural County Representatives of California, um, key role in, in working along with the county. Um, we opted into an EDA grant um, along with them, uh, actually with their financing arm, Golden State Financial. And um, the EDA grant was for the purpose of developing individual countywide broadband strategic plans. If I may, um, I believe this is item number six, or sorry, number nine. So do we need to announce it and bring it to public comment and then before yeah, that, that'll be fine. I think next time, Brian, we'll, we'll separate it out, separate them okay. out or, or so put them, put them one, together next one time. One second, because we're going <laughs> to, we're going to, um, the, so the, do we want to combine public comment no, on these two? So no, go, go ahead. Go, public you could, right but now on you might as well go ahead eight. and ask for public comment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any public comment on item number eight? On Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. No comment. Okay, bring it back to the board. There's no action item on this. It's informational only. Correct. Do you have any questions so far? No questions, no. I have a couple of questions, but um, with it, the collaboration aspect, um, have we been working with the city or COG, the Council of Government, with any future roadway improvements and laying down you know, the, the piping um, or the conduit to be able to produce fiber later? Is there, where are we at on that? I think that uh, there are future discussions that need to be had. Um, we have had some discussions with the city. Um, yeah, we have a policy. So just so you know, we have a, a, a dig once policy. So that okay. is something we already have. I do know that there have been discussions with um, uh, Don, um, I know that um, they're putting in some um, uh, the sewage lines and, uh, you know, they're doing some work. They're going to be dropping in fiber for that. I know that there's been conversations with the city as well. Um, so, but I think we probably, you know, probably do need to, when we get a little closer, we probably should talk with them again. I guess, you know, it's just an ongoing Ongoing, yeah. Ongoing you know, projects and other things going on. We should definitely keep that in and mind. And just let that dig once, not get left behind. You get, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes I think that can happen. Yep, I agree. Yeah. So, Brian, just if you can make a note of that. I have. Or, and maybe, you know, meet with the city. Um, my only other comment <clears throat> is um, we're working with these specific providers. Um, was this through an RFP process? How did this get to this point? just to give a little background. Yeah, so the, the two that were mentioned um, for the management piece and the design piece um, came along with the MOU that we did. Um, so when we chose to work along with RCRC and uh, with the um, GSFA, the financial arm, Golden State Finance Authority, um, these two parties came along with that. So, you know, GSFA, um, I'm trying to decide how to describe it. So what they do is they structure, develop, and administer programs that provide source of funding. So uh, they were chosen by RCRC. Um, they went out and negotiated rates for them to work along if we, tried, if we chose to work with RCRC to help us apply for the grant. So that's what we did. Um, I left both of you a little sheet there which shows the late to grant and where the monies are going, the 500K. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that some of that money goes to those two um, agencies um, for their services. Now, we, in addition to their services, um, RCRC did put out an RFP for the initial conceptual um, development of the strategic plan design. And that went out to consultants to bid on via RFP process. Um, what they did is they, they put that out um, back in December. Mm -hmm. And there were consultants that responded to that. There was um, a total of eight. Um, I was a part of the meeting where they discussed the um, respondents 
and their qualifications for uh, being a consultant on the conceptual design phase. Um, and then they rated them in, in different categories. There were um, five different categories they rated them on. Uh, proposal quality, scope of work, uh, their experience and the qualifications of their team, um, the project schedule, the work plan, and then cost. So one has been selected to work along with our area. Um, and that one is by the name of Teleworks. And that selection took place, uh, let's see here. That was uh, just this month, earlier this month, uh, February 3rd. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so to answer your question, and I believe you have the, R, the yep. um, actual RFP packet on your desk there. Right. And if anyone else needs it in the public, we have a copies for you. And this is just the proposal of the conceptional, conceptional Strate plan. Strategic it's, plan. That's it's correct. not like every aspect of the program. Right. And okay. so, and just for clarity purposes, um, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So we need somebody to go out there, engineer and find out exactly what locations actually need uh, broadband. And I think this is going to be very helpful for us. And also to to add an element of cost associated with that, what is it going to cost? Because that's kind of the next phase of this as well, which we which we have some money for uh, as brought out earlier. But there's also more grants, as we were discussing earlier, to actually do implementation. But this really helps us get to a place where we're where we're ready to go. OK, um, my only other comment is have we worked with our local providers that actually have service in our county and actually looked at where their service areas are against each other and where the holes are and how possibly GIS may be able to coordinate some of that information to make a priority list? Just thinking. Brian, if you want to add to that, I mean, yes, they're, they're a part of this conversation. We've invited Charter. Um, we have um, Spectrum. Spectrum. Um, I know that there is one that you've been working with that we've invited her to the meetings as well. Um, garlic, garlic.com or um, South Valley Internet. Yeah. So yes, the to answer your question is yes, we have been. I'm, I'm just looking at local providers and local jobs and yeah. how we can keep that more local. Right. Okay. Anything else, Brian? And, and just to kind of step back, though, to answer that a little bit, too, that, you know, some of these, like in regards to Hankins and Entheric, you know, they're, they had to apply for it. And so they won those awards. Um, and there's some things that um, are kind of outside of our control um, with that. So there are certain awards and like the RFP process. But I think as we get farther along in the process, I think that's going to be important. I think that's something we can you know, lobby for and, and have happen. So I just wanted to nope, put that in sounds perspective. Good. Yeah. Just trying to get my head wrapped yeah. around what you've done and where we're at right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think um, as far as just identifying those specific areas, um, you know, that's where a lot of collaborative work is going to take place um, with those other ISPs and service providers. And I know when I first started in technology 15, 16 years ago, the CCBC was also really important. And I, I know that they're still active. I've asked Brian to, you know, and our team to be a, a part of that. Um, and um, I know when I started, you know, we were applying for grants back then, back in that, you know, back in those days. And it's, you know, I, that's another collaborative. It's a, it's a consortium of the Tri-County area, which I think is a great collaborative effort. And, um, and, you know, with them, with, you know, the support we're getting from RCRC, with, you know, the local um, ISPs, and we have our, you know, our school. I was we, going to we say invite, that we've we, been coordinating. We've been with coordinating with the schools and local cities. Um, so, you know, we were doing everything we can from that perspective. And ultimately, I think, you know, you know, the board has asked the county IT to kind of help with this effort. And it's more a facilitation. We're not actually going to go out there. And, right and you know start directionally boring fiber and connecting everybody up but it's more the higher kind of level and here's approach. the plan and and, here's, and how we want it right. to be executed okay yeah great thank you brian okay. now we're going to move on to the next item are we good uh, i don't do you have another slide on that one on the rcrc broadband strategic we didn't actually open that one up is this tied is this tied to that the next slide or 
Uh, it, it is tied to because uh, we did provide some letters of support that went through RCRC. Okay, uh, okay, we're going to do the so, presentation, then we'll bring it back for public comment, right? Because this is the RCRC Broadband Strategic Plan Vendor Selection Update, which is separate from the one that we were reading, uh, receiving about the LATA. Well, we kind of just talked about. We just did, yeah. We just update. did. Yeah. I just don't want to skip public comment. No, no, no. We're we're but we're not quite done with the presentation yet. Once he's done, we'll no. let you do public comment. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that, that was the vendor update, selection update. Um, the only other thing was just a notable mention. Um, again, efforts that the county has made, we've uh, provided a couple letters of support, uh, one to the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Um, and again, that was just to further their initiatives towards broadband, and it covers the areas of uh, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, and San Benito because you know those are the areas that they're focusing on um, we also provided a letter of support uh, just earlier this month to the golden state finance authority um, and this was for something called the community economic resilience fund uh, which is basically it's a pilot project for 2023 um, there's some grant funds up to two ten million dollars per region um, and again, it's all with the same goal, just getting broadband uh, where it needs to be and um, it's funding that you know we wanna get behind. So that's really it. Um, the only uh, other thing that happened just here recently is uh, again, this was related to Monterey Bay Economic Partnership, but um, they were recently awarded a grant um, through the CC BC, which is Central Coast Broadband Consortium of $1 million. So um, those funds are uh, for development, support of broadband. And again, it's to expand uh, broadband at Monterey, Santa Cruz and San Benito counties. So, you know, congratulations to them, mm -hmm. of which will also be a benefactor. And that, uh, that pretty much concludes the broadband update. Okay, we'll bring it to public comment. On Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon. In chambers, please provide a speaker card. Please state your name for the record. You've been unmuted. Hi, this is uh, James Hankins. Um, I was just uh, chiming in just to uh, ride on the coattail to Brian a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're here, we're local, and we're excited to uh, solve a lot of the um, connectivity issues um, in the county and um, just uh, we're, we're here to support you guys as well and you know let us know what we can do to help great thank you so much um wayne norton i'm a resident of aromas and um i'm here today sort of as a member of the access committee of san juan batista rotary we're working on a project where our goal is to make sure that uh, we have free broadband to every kid in our school district who is a uh, free and reduced lunch program, which is the marker for uh, low income students. And because we recognize our club recognized several years ago that equity is or uh, the lack of broadband is the equity issue of our day. And that if we don't do something about making sure that we get every student in our district connected to broadband, we're going to we risk losing a generation of students. So, you know, we're work, we're working on this project and, and frankly, it's it's kind of hard to figure out um, some of the, it, it's a highly technical field and I'm not a highly technical guy and to try to figure out exactly where it is that we make connections and how we, you know, how we uh, enter the system in a way that's helpful and productive and, and it's everything supports each other. Um, and what, one thing to be really helpful for today is if uh, we're careful about acronyms and abbreviations, because I don't know how many non-technical people are participating in this, but I certainly get confused by just trying to understand what some of the things mean, what they are. And and I, I want to encourage us as we, um, as we go through this process to um, make it as, as public and making sure we get as much public comment as we can. You know, oftentimes these technical things sort of become the world of techies. Um, and um, so, you know, regular people sort of get lost in the process, but they have, 
you know, ideas and needs and can add valuable insight to what we're doing. So, you know, um, I, I highly encourage a, a public, uh, transparent process. Um, and um, to have maybe, you know, sometimes you have uh, language translation, sometimes maybe we need technical translation to go along with some of the meetings so that we make sure that everyone understands what we're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? Yes. Um, please state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Yes, my name is John Freeman, and I'm a resident of San Juan Batista and a city councilman for San Juan. Um, I just wanted to kind of fill in a gap there about uh, the conduit that can and will be going in all, all, all alongside our sewer line to the Hollister uh, treatment plant. Uh, that project uh, has been delayed till a, actually it's going to bid, and the project, uh, the RFP for the bidding process has been delayed to the beginning of April. But I highly encourage everybody, including the county and Hawkins and every other internet company to, to look into leasing or running their own line in our ditch. Um, uh, you know, it, it's always cheapest and always best when it, there's a nice wide open ditch for, for you to lay your conduit into. And the more fiber, the better and the better. And I'm in complete support of Wayne Norton's um, open access uh, idea and, and and organization um and and the way we got to get there is get middle mile uh, broadband internet fiber optic service between the city the county and 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 san juan batista so, so the two cities anyway thank you thank you no further comments Okay, so we'll bring it back to the count, the committee. Any comments, Bob? No? Okay. Um, I'll just add, can I add one yeah, thing if you don't mind? Ahead. Sure. So um, I, I wanted to, to thank um, the um, Office of Ed, their technology department, as well as Nora Conte. Um, is not technically digging fiber in the ground, but it, it is it is reaching out to needy students and those that are in need for uh, having a connection to the network or get internet, excuse me. Uh, we got granted $11 million. And so we have Chromebooks, hotspots, and other things to help those that don't have easy access or access. Um, so I think that's also kind of something to talk about. It's kind of in this realm and um, really appreciate the efforts that went into doing that. I, I do know that Nora is starting um, to receive some Chromebooks. We, um, I've asked a schedule um, to be put in place so that we may be able to hit every district and have each one of the board members and any other key individuals from those represented areas to be a part of the um, process of handing out um, some of these Chromebooks. Uh, to those that are in need for schools, different schools. I believe there's you know, 21 agencies or service agencies that uh, she's coordinating with. So um, there's um, a lot of work kind of behind the scenes on that as well. And I just thought it was um, appropriate to talk about that right now in this setting. Sounds good. Um, I think there's been a lot of work done there. Um, my biggest concern right now is in South County, which is, has a lot of North County uh, focus right now, South County, and the fact that, you know, you can have a hotspot and have no cell service, you know, it doesn't do you much good as far as I know. Um, I could be wrong. Well, and that's, that's the, that's the whole premise of what today's conversation is about is getting access to South County. That's really yeah. the, the big issue, the big point, but I think it's also good to provide the, those, um, provide the computers and the hotspots when those individuals do get into an area where there is signal yeah. that they can actually use those hotspots. It's, I believe it's a year free service. It's kind of a big deal yeah, that they can great. use it. So. That's great. A hey, question about the, yeah. so how much of the 11 million is, is for Chromebooks, all, the whole thing? And hotspots. And so hotspots. how many, how many Chromebooks is that? We're going to get, we're going to be able to Thousands? provide books for the entire county. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's quite a few. No, are I'm, are I'm any of those books facetious. available, you know, uh, for 
government purposes when it comes to like emergency services and OES and, and disaster recovery? Education, training. So um, as, as you know, we, we've asked them to put them to um, for like uh, the one stop, you know, um, using some of those in some of those key areas for government purposes, training people. Maybe training we can purposes. make this a future agenda item so we don't sure. go off topic and, and sure. maybe just educate Dom and I, or sorry, yeah. Supervisor Zanger and I on um, where we're at on that and yeah. how that could potentially be utilized at the county level. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank yep. you. We're going to do that. Um, okay. So the only other thing before we get to the next item on this about broadband, um, I've been following broadband. Um, since I started to become a candidate and um, Uplift Central Coast. Do we have any county representatives, meaning our employees representing us at Uplift Central Coast and the broadband meetings that they have? I'm sorry, the, is it the CCBC you're talking about? This is the seven county um region where funding is being focused on and broadband is one component of much of this and i can gather some information and share it with you um it does include i believe the the surf um it does include uh some of these other branches um but that's where i've been getting the majority of my information is from uplift and we have to really have a voice at those meetings to get San Benito on the map, because map because we're dealing with Santa Cruz, Santa Clara, Monterey, San Luis Obispo, and Santa Barbara, and I believe there's one more county in there somewhere. Mm. Ventura. Ventura, that's it. Ventura, yeah. Okay. Oh, you pulled it right up. See. <sighs> yeah. So that's yeah. Okay. Um, also, the only other thing on this is I did share with you a handbook um, that I received from the uh, NACO conference this last weekend um, on the efficient uh, or the effect, the effect of administration of state and local digital equity programs. And I'm, I will get you the link on that so you can share it with staff. All day. Okay. Okay. So any other comments on this topic? Are we good to move forward? Okay. Future agenda items, which I just kind of mm -hmm. said what my future agenda item is. Yeah, two of them. Um, do you have any future agenda items? Uh, no, nothing to add right now. Okay. Um, so we're going to go into the, uh, do we have public comment on any future agenda items? Is there anything the public would like to comment for future agenda? On Zoom, please press star nine or the raise your hand icon and chambers, please come up to the podium. No comment. So Madam great. Chair, so I'll, I'll add those two items. We'll have the continuing conversation with broadband and, and the continual update with that. And anything else technically that we, you know, um, work with the community on, I'll make sure that's on too. That's great. So. It's just, there's so many facets to this broadband funding and it's at so many levels and so many agencies. I feel there's a great opportunity, but also a very big window of us missing out on something because it's so big right now. And what I'll do, actually what I'll do is I'll invite our grant writer. Oh, I, think that, I think that might be a good, um, thing to do and he can provide an update what grants are out there um what other grants we can go after be, besides the ones we have been going after sounds great yeah. that's wonderful thank you okay so we're going to move to closed session. Yes, session any public comment on closed session on zoom please press star nine or raise your hand icon in chambers please provide a speaker card no comment I just like to thank the attendees and the comments from Zoom. It's very much appreciated. Go ahead, Barbara. We're we gonna announce anything or we're we just going to closed session. Oh, we don't announce anymore. That's right, we changed that rule. Okay, so we're gonna go into closed session. It is 240.
Okay. All right, it should be live. We're live. We're live. Okay, we're back from closed session. Uh, any reportable? No, no reportable action. Okay. Uh, then I have a motion to adjourn. Yep. So moved. So moved. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, thanks. I will say all the practice really helped. <laughs> <laughs>